On April 23rd, there's a full moon in Scorpio making a square to Pluto the planet of power, control, and transformation. So you know that little obsession that's been ticking away in your brain? That has a message for you. And that's what we're gonna talk about. Hi everyone, I'm Donna Stellhorn, your Practical Astrologer, and today we are talking about the full moon. It's on April 23rd. Uh, it's in four degrees of Scorpio. We're going to do a short overview and then we're going to go sign by sign. So the excitement of the eclipses is past and you probably already know what kind of changes are happening in your life. This eclipse has already been activated and an activation of an eclipse is when a planet crosses that degree. And so that was Venus on April 20th. That's the same day that we had expansive exuberant Jupiter conjunct Uranus, uh, which is the wild and crazy planet. And so there is a, a lot of different changes happening in the world and probably happening in your life. Now, these types of events in astrology are markers. Uh, these are the points where decisions are made. And that it doesn't mean that all of the changes happen on those days, but this is the point where you make the decision and then the changes begin to unfold. So now we have a full moon in Scorpio making a square to Pluto, and this can trigger some obsessive behavior. So you have, may have said, okay, I'm making a change in my life, only to find yourself being drawn back into some old behaviors or at least some old thought patterns. And so the, the things that you promised yourself that you wouldn't do anymore, you may be thinking about them a lot or obsessed by them or, or just feel that you're being pulled back into some old behaviors. And while this is perfectly natural, especially on a full moon square Pluto, it can cause you to question whether you've made the right decision or question your abilities to move forward. One of the ways to look at Pluto in Aquarius is like the King of Swords in the Tarot. The King of Swords is the King of Thought. He's the King of Ideas. Um, he's, he may notice obsessive thoughts, but he's not controlled by them. Uh, he may notice a, a real interest in something, but you know, he's still going to make his own choices. So he's a king and that means that he is in charge. It doesn't mean that he knows everything that's going to happen in the future. He just has the confidence to know that he can handle it. That's the energy that you want to strive for right now. If you are king, you know, you don't control the future but you trust in your own ability to handle whatever's coming. So now with the Scorpio full moon, we are wading through the dark Scorpio waters. And so uh, the Scorpio energy is kind of like a, a smooth, calm lake, but underneath the whole world is going on. And so that might mean that, that there's a monster underneath or there might be hidden treasure underneath. But as the King of Swords wades through the water, they, the the King of Swords knows that, that he can handle whatever he finds. In fact, the King of Swords might find the monster there and then, I don't know, take it on the road and do a one man show and, and build a treasure out of that. So, so the, as you are doing this, this energy, it, even though the thoughts are bubbling up from underneath, underneath these deep, dark Scorpio waters, you can say, all right, uh, this is happening. I'm thinking these thoughts, but that doesn't mean they control me. So in this video, we are doing tropical Western astrology. It's a good idea to listen to your rising sign. That's also called your ascendant and or ascending sign, because that's going to give you the most accurate information about what's coming up. Now, if you don't know your rising sign, send me your birth information and I'll send you a PDF copy of your chart. There's a link in the description. If you would like to know more about what this full moon and those previous eclipses have in store for you in 2024, I do readings. There's a link in the description. Today, we used a tarot card to illustrate one of the transits. If you're interested in learning to read the tarot, I have a video course on this. Uh, there's more than a hundred videos and uh, what we really focus on is how to look at the tarot card and see it as a still frame in a movie. And so from that per perspective, 
you can roll the movie forward or back to see future and past. So it's just a different way of reading the tarot without memorizing a lot of information. There's a link in the description. Okay, let's go sign by sign. The most difficult part of this full moon in Scorpio square Pluto is that you can get into a situation with someone else where you feel coerced to do something. And this could be due to some sort of manipulation on their part, or because you feel that you're not in control of your impulses, or you're giving your power away. And this is not just you, this is for all signs. Okay, Aries, so for you in this, you are doing this full moon in financial houses. And so there could be a great deal of pressure on you to make investments uh, or make a change in your investment strategy based on whether the market's going up or going down. And you could feel a great deal of pressure from friends or just the community at large. Um, you know, just this idea that you're missing out in some way or that you're vulnerable in some way. And it can feel overwhelming because this is a lot of unknowns, especially when it comes to the market, which is more capricious than ever. And so the what is necessary is to stop and kind of consider what your options are to not take rash action and not be impulsive and not be manipulated into something, but instead to say to yourself, where should I start? Because you're Aries and Aries is about starting something, beginning. So what is the first thing you should do and chunk that down into something practical? Because the uh, the overwhelming thing can happen of thinking that you have to do everything all at once, but instead it's just one simple action. And maybe that is to just open up all of your financial statements and just see where you're at. Maybe that is just the first step because in that step, you may discover that there are some opportunities for you either to collect some profits or to find a lower interest rate. Uh, I think that, that, it's got to start though with a simple action. However your chart is laid out, there are some people who naturally have thinking then action, and it's laid out that way in their chart. <laughs> I'm personally not one of those lucky ones who have that. I have action before thinking. And so that often means that, and when a person has that, that you take an action first and then the thought comes, oh my goodness, that wasn't quite right. And then you go back and redo it. So if you do have that in your chart, then just go back and redo, you know, start the action, but try not to take an action that is going to be all encompassing. That's, that's again, doing the little tiny steps can be really helpful here because if you if you know that you have that in your chart for one, or you know that you often have to redo things, then take a small step forward and then what you need to do will become clear. Now, when it comes to relationships, and this is gonna be all types of relationships, love relationships, partnerships, friendships, Mars is making a semi-sextile to Venus, but Venus is in Aries, which is ruled by Mars. So you have a, a good strong connection for you know, making new friends and finding love and all of that, that's all wonderful. However, it's still a semi-sextile. And so there is some point of resistance, possibly on your part of getting out there or going to the party or meeting the new person. And that resistance could be related to something from your past because Mars is in Pisces. It's not quite yet in your sign. And so if we look at Mars as being a cycle and it's a two year cycle, over the last two years, you've collected a lot of information and made a lot of connections. And now you're at the very, very end of that. And so that is processing what's worked and what hasn't worked. Who are you keeping in your life? Who are you just letting go? And so that's the point in your life that you are. So therefore it can feel like you want to start something new, but it's not quite time yet. And so with all of that said, you're still making an aspect for making something happen, but recognize you seem to be dragging with you all of the baggage from the past. So let some of that go. Now, when it comes to your money, you are doing 
all of this full moon in money houses. So uh, the full moon is in the house of resources from others. Pluto is going through your house of money derived from career. The sun is in your house of just money. So there's a lot of money energy happening here, but because it's the full moon, you could be quite emotional about this and you could feel like you are being pulled in one direction or another when it comes to financial decisions. And so it, in that, it is quite important for you to know what your mind is and what your decisions are. And yet this is going to take stopping and stop all the for forward movement for a moment so that you can determine whether the direction you're heading is the correct one for you. And this is something that's a little counter to Aries that always likes to move forward and just says, you know, the solution to all problems is if we just take some action. And so the action now has to be to stop and to sort things out. And when you do, then you uncover the treasure. That's when you find that, that what you've been battling is actually beneficial for you. So I think that this, this is the key for this time. Okay, Taurus, the most difficult part of this full moon is, the, of course, the square to Pluto, which can give you the feeling that someone else is forcing you to do something that you don't want to do, either through their manipulation of the situation or because you're not in control of your impulses or maybe because you're giving your power away. Now we see this full moon activating your houses of relationship. So we know that this is a dynamic with someone that you already know. Possibly that this is the person that you're in a, a, a committed relationship with or a close friend or because Pluto is very elevated in your chart, someone dealing with your job or in your career. So everyone likes to be the hero of their own story and that includes this person that you're dealing with. And so one of the things to consider while you're doing this full moon energy is to try to come at it from their point of view. What, why did they see that they are correct or how are they writing themselves as the hero in the story? When we look at relationships for you of all kinds, and that might be love relationships or business partnerships, we don't see an aspect happening between Venus and Pluto, although we do see a semi-sextile between Venus and Mars. And so the energy here looks like you are you know, close to working something out, but the, you are perhaps getting tripped up by small details. There are some little things that have to be worked out. And once you do, then things could get better. I think that the challenge is that to find what those things are, you have to know what you want first, because currently Venus is in Aries. And so that means it's the sign before yours. So, so in, in an effect, it, it's like behind you, like what you want is out of your vision. And so you're not really sure what it is. And when you get more clear about what you want from a, a person or a particular situation, then things can get better. Now, the idea though of if the issue is around meeting someone new, with that square to Pluto, the energy feels a little bit more like um, that it seems like an impossible task. Like it's so hard to get out of the house and meet someone and the people that you meet, maybe you don't feel like you can trust them. And so you, you need to look at different ways of meeting someone to find a way around the things that are blocking you. But again, some of this is going to be difficult while Venus is in Aries. And so you may want to wait for a few weeks because then Venus will be in Taurus and things will be easier for you to see and identify. Now, when it comes to your money, what's happening is that you are uh, because Mercury is retrograde, you're having some thoughts that you had before. Some messages from the universe are coming through, but you've heard these before. And maybe this time they are resonating with you entirely differently. And so this might mean going back over, you know, like some inspirational podcast that you listened to, or maybe you read a book on finance or something and you go back now and look at it and now it really speaks to you. Now it just clicks into place and you say, oh, this is exactly what I need. This is the information that I've been looking for. This is the answer. And so just digging through your, 
you know, listening history or go back to something that, you know, it resonated at that time, but go back another time. And because I think that now that that message from the universe is going to click into place and then you have opportunities for more money. And then, of course, finally, because this is a full moon, lighting up relationship houses, the more people you meet, the more money you can make. And so this is about going out and being social or doing social media or expanding your presence out in the world so that people can find you. Okay, Gemini, the most difficult part of this full moon, which I'm telling all of the signs, is that this is a square to Pluto. And so it can feel like someone is trying to force you to do something, either through some sort of manipulation or because you are having trouble controlling your own impulses or you are giving away your power. Now, what you're specifically doing with this full moon is there seems to be some sort of disruption in your daily routines. And this can mean that you feel like whoever the authority is, whoever is making demands of you, they are sucking away all of your time and energy. So you don't have time to do the things that you want to do. And this may come down to the fact that everything is a choice. And Sometimes we don't have good choices, but we still have a choice. And I'm, I'm having a memory of an episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer when, when she said those exact words. I can't remember the episode. Maybe you do, and you can tell me in the comments. But the, the idea is to, if you start to look at everything as a choice, and then you can start to pull your own power back to yourself and then the universe will bring you opportunities and make it easier for you to find your way out of challenging situations or where you have over obligated yourself. Now, when it comes to relationships of all kinds, all the energy that everybody's doing this time is about semi-sextiles and semi-sextile is you know, astrologically, it's the sign next to the sign. So for Gemini, semi-sextiles are Taurus and Cancer. And it is kind of like when you, it's kind of like a sibling aspect, which I think gives Gemini a little bit of an edge because Gemini rules siblings. And so siblings can be so valuable in our lives and so irritating at the same time. It's because, you know, they're just enough like us to be in harmony and just enough different to really get on our nerves. And so this is the type of energy that you're doing specifically for all kinds of relationships. And so that is it. maybe you and your partner are coming together and agreeing about a lot of things, but there's a couple things that just drive you nuts. And so as you discuss those and try to find some common ground, then you can solve those problems. But sometimes it's just a matter of saying, okay, you're going to be different. And that's, and to focus on the bigger, more important goals. And then I would say, if you are looking to meet someone new for a love relationship, you have a very strong house of community right now. That means that if you go out into the neighborhood, into the community, whether that is doing some sort of classes or going to a community center or doing some charitable work in your neighborhood, those are places that you could meet someone new for a love relationship. So when it comes to money and making money, there's no aspect going on between the moon and Saturn, but they are in harmonious signs. And so this is a little bit more about taking the things that you do on a daily basis and seeing if those are leading to your goal. Saturn is very elevated in your chart right now, and that gives you the opportunity to improve and get better and pull in the type of business that you want to pull in, whether that is a new job or a better position at your uh, current job or to expand your business. But it does come down to what are you doing on a daily basis? That's where this full moon is lighting up that house that says, you know, are you doing the actual actions that are going to lead to what it is that you want? So this is a time to really focus on what makes you money and leave other things, maybe they're speculative things, or maybe they're just more work because you think it needs to be done. And yet it actually is pulling you away from the actual things you need to do to find customers or to get the promotion. So this is looking at your daily life and really focusing on the actions that directly lead you to money. 
okay, Cancer, the this energy that of course all the signs are doing is this full moon is squaring Pluto and a square to Pluto indicates that you may feel that somebody in your life is trying to get you to do something and they are making you feel obligated to do this thing and maybe that's through manipulation or some sort of coercion or it is because you yourself are you know giving away your power saying I don't have a choice I must do this and so the energy that's lit up for you in this full moon is in your house of children and also creativity and so if you have kids this can mean that you know typical cancer that you're kind of the mama bear you know you're going to do whatever it takes to protect those kids and give them whatever they need and yet sometimes that relationship becomes way out of balance where the kids are pulling so much from you that you you don't feel like you have a life you don't feel like you have uh, the joy you are so busy you know worrying about them and taking care of them that everything gets focused on them and and at that point because it's out of balance it can feel like, you know like like you're obligated and not I, I don't know not not happy with the the balance of it it's absolutely wonderful to give but not if you feel that you're obligated to give and not that you know there's they're not going to like me if I don't or they're they're going to not speak to me if I don't that then it crosses a line of course so this is this energy of this full moon is just to give you a couple of weeks to examine this it, it may not even mean that you need to do that much about it you know the the Scorpio moon is in harmony with your cancer energy so this may just be something that you realize and maybe point out you know this is happening and then see if it self corrects on its own it's also just possible that the universe wants you to know that that you know that even if you are struggling to make sure that your kids are all right and they're not in a position where they can show you the appreciation and the love that the universe is saying you know we love you we we care about what you're doing and shining a light on that to say maybe there are different ways of doing it now if you're looking at this from the point of creativity maybe you don't have kids and so you are then you know this even if you don't have kids you still have this point of creativity that you're creating something in your life whether that is good relationships with people or art or music or um, you know you're cooking for somebody like you're doing something that has this this you know you're taking components and you're creating something else and then the Pluto here is challenging you because it says there's not enough resources to create what you want and yet this is where you push back on that and say I will find a way I will find the resources just from another source so if you're in that type of situation where you feel like I don't have the resources necessary to create what I want then it's just time to look for a different source of resources now when it comes to all types of relationships you know uh, friendships and love relationships there's general harmony here because the, the moon's in a water sign Saturn's in a water sign and you are a water sign and so so we have a general harmony going on so there there's this opportunity to make things work even if they haven't worked in the past now it's possible that you are looking for a love relationship and this would be a really good time to get out there and just be seen so this may not mean that you're meeting someone right now but just that you attend the party and then someone remembers you and then that connection happens later so I think this is a really good time to be social you have a lot of elevated planets in your chart so you're easily seen when you're out in the world now when it comes to your money the the Sun and Uranus are both in the sign of Taurus and the Sun is not making an aspect with yours but will catch it 
And so whatever it is that you're working on, you may be very frustrated right now that it's not bringing you the results that you want, but it's still too soon. It's like planting a seed and then standing over the seed and saying, why aren't you growing? You have to give it a little bit more time. And you may tell me that you've spent 10 years on this, but it still says you need to give it more time. So if this is your investments, if this is your career, keep doing what you're doing, try to do what you're doing better, improve it wherever you can and but stay on the path because the the sun and Uranus are in harmony right now but they just they just haven't closed the gap okay Leo the of course as I've been saying to everybody the most difficult part of this full moon is that square to Pluto because when there's a square to Pluto there can be a sense that you are feeling forced to do something by someone that they are um, maybe manipulating you or coercing you in some way or you are feeling like uh, you don't have power in the situation so you're giving them your power and they the, therefore you don't feel like you have a choice and and so you are doing this energy specifically in the area of home and family and so that is you know like dynamics with family members the ones who live with you and also extended family as well as your dwelling like where you live and so there may be some challenges here maybe you're you know trying to work something out with some relatives about where somebody in your family will be living um, you know perhaps perhaps you're looking at older relatives who are downsizing or are changing residences maybe you are feeling like you know your children are grown up and it's time for them to leave the nest but everything's so expensive and how can they do that and so there's a lot of I think energy around that and what you need to do because it's a square to Pluto is to realize that you have choices here that it may feel like because of inflation and prices so high and all of that that you don't have choices but that's when you have to say okay none of these choices are going to work what else is out there and start to really expand your ideas you know and, and just a, a little side note, a more mundane astrology note on housing in general. You know, so we were in a rabbit year before from a Chinese astrology perspective, and rabbit was very much about home and family, and now we're in dragon. And so dragon is a little bit more about thinking outside the box, going big. And so we're seeing prices just like skyrocket. And some of that is just because dragon is just the bigger, the better, and the higher the limit so but when we get to 2025 we're going to do a snake year and everything settles back down to earth and so we will see i think in some areas prices dropping we may see some higher interest rates which cause the market to be depressed a bit i think there'll be some changes and so if you are thinking about selling and stuff like that and of course you know i'm not a realtor i'm not a financial planner but if if you were thinking about it you might be looking at selling this year but maybe waiting and buying later now when it comes to relationships and this could be love relationships and business partnerships and friendships uh, the sun and uranus are in the same sign but they're not conjunct so we have a kind of a feeling that you and the other person are on the same page when you haven't quite agreed on all the terms now this aspect is getting closer which is great which means that as you move forward and discuss things you can come to an agreement and that might be something that you've been working on for a long time and you finally say okay we're going to be on the same page with about finances or raising the kids or something like that uh, so and if this is some sort of negotiations that you're doing in business you are getting closer together but it hasn't happened yet so keep working on it and it will improve and then just a quick note if you are looking for love you do have some really uh, elevated planets right now which means you're very easy to be found so put yourself out in the world in places where you can meet new people or let people fix you up on dates because you are very visible now and that means someone could approach you for a connection now when it comes to money the mercury's retrograde and that always is a sign to rethink replan redo reconstruct you know like any of the re words and so it's quite important right now for you to rethink your plans so 
you know, roll out your your business plan, your your sheets of lists of how you're going to do things, or write down how you are planning to get from where you are now to your million or billion dollar goal, and then rethink it. That's what this is saying. Now, there's no aspect going on with Neptune right now. They're in different signs. And so there is a disconnect between your plans and how to get what it is you want. That's why you need to be doing some rethinking. On the other hand, you have enormous asp uh, energy around getting the information that you need. You just have to boil it down to the right question. So that's, I think, the questions that you ask can be so, so important. That is that if you say to yourself, you know, why do I never make money? Your brain works on that question, which it's not helpful because even when you get the answer, it doesn't help. But if you switch that to say, how can I make an extra hundred dollars this week? Uh, how can I make an extra thousand dollars this month? Now your brain is working on a useful question. And with that, uh, all those planets that are sitting in informational houses, I think that this would be really good for you now. Okay, Virgo, this full moon is difficult for, well, everybody, but for, for you specifically, because when the full moon does a square to Pluto, it can feel like you are compulsed to do something, that, that something is out of your control, that either a person or a situation is causing you to have no choice. And of course, this is an illusion. The, the, the whole reason for this aspect is for you to gain equilibrium and find that choice again. And so specifically for you, the full moon is lighting up your house of thinking process. And so that's the ideas that bubble up and what we hold on to and what we, we, uh, you know, like, uh, the, the ideas that we just feel obsessed about and the Pluto, which is sitting in your house of daily routines, which is also coworkers. So it is quite possible that some of this stress could be due to your work situation, but it's also could be based on that you're in some sort of pattern and that is triggering some negative thoughts. Like you open up your statements and go, oh, things are always more expensive and you know, I can't, I can't take this or that the alarm goes off for to get up in the morning, but you didn't get the full night's sleep. And so those sort of situational things can be happening. And these are the things that you can shift or transform right now. You know, there's an interesting thing in feng shui that we talk about because in feng shui, we're very concerned about your space and how you're using your space. And so one of the things is that we can talk about scripts where a person does a certain set of actions at home that can then trigger a sense of emotion or certain thoughts. And so like if the person comes home every day, um, or I should start from the beginning. So, and that one might be that the person doesn't want a snack before dinner, right? So, but they come home from work, they put their stuff down in the kitchen, the refrigerator is right there, they open the refrigerator, now they're snacking. And then the solution is to change the script, which is have them come in, place their belongings, maybe in the living room or in the bedroom, and that's away from the refrigerator. And so therefore it breaks the pattern. So there's something here going on with you that is like that, where you might be able to just break a physical pattern and therefore not have the same compulsive thoughts. And so, um, and that's, that's what this Pluto is about, is to take back control of your mind. And I know we can't control the thoughts that come in, but we do control the thoughts that we dwell on. And, and so that's, that's what this full moon is about for you. Now, when it comes to relationships of all kinds, uh, love relationships, partnerships, friendships, Mercury's retrograde, and that means it's always a time to relook at something, rethink about something. The reason that Virgo is ruled by Mercury and Mercury retrograde is such a prominent thing is because your superpower is your ability to make minute changes, incremental changes to make something better. So this is your opportunity when Mercury's retrograde 
for you and your partner to rethink how you're doing something. So, so really embrace your superpower and know that during this time, while it can be frustrating because you might think, okay, I don't have time to work on the relationship right now. This is your opportunity, especially to, uh, to change something small, something that incrementally will make a huge difference. Now, when it comes to your money, the interesting thing is you've got Venus making a semi sextile to Mars. You have very strong uh, money house, especially for resources. But the semi sextile, it can trip you up to say, all right, the money's right there and I have to ask someone or, or connect with someone to get it. And that's difficult. And some of that would be Mercury retrograde. You just can't get a hold of the person that you want. And so you have to make extra attempts or that when you do get the information, it's not quite clear and you have to go back to them and say, Hey, can you clear this up? But the money is there. And so try to be persistent, knock on the door quite often, because I do think you could make more money, especially over this next two weeks and set yourself up for more money in the future with that extra persistence right now. Okay, Libra, the, the most difficult part of this full moon, which I've been telling all of the signs, is that it's making a square to Pluto. And so when there's a square to Pluto, it can feel like your choices are out of your control, that somebody else or something else is demanding that you do something. And because you feel like you don't have the power or you've given your power away to from in the situation that you are forced to do something. And this is, you're, you're getting this challenge to say, no, I, I am not being forced to make this choice. I do have a choice. I mean, I'd have good choices, but I still have the power to make a choice. And specifically where this is, it's falling in your area of finances. It, there are some connections here to your creativity and, and what you wanna do and the fun you'd like to have or what you wanna give your children. And a lot of this is, you know, the idea that it's taking so much time and energy just to get the bills paid that you don't have time to go out and do the things you really want to do. Now, some of this may be turning your mind to what you're having to do for money and looking at it in from a creative standpoint and saying, okay, how can I streamline this? How can I automate this? Is there a way to delegate this and to get creative about a solution? So, and, but some of this is maybe you have a side business or side project that you know is going to make you money, but you just don't have the time and energy to work on it. And so with this configuration, one of the things you might do is finding friends to help you. Maybe they are also looking for doing a side business and then the two of you can come together and do little increments. And so you can build something that way. But it is also is to be able to switch gears. And so you're very focused on your work. And then at the end of the day, of course, you're tired and you got to take care of the kids and all that. And maybe only have 15 minutes to work on your novel or your song or to practice your crafts. And but take that 15 minutes and, you know, and like it, it doesn't seem like much, but it will build. And so that I think is where you take back your power, even if you're just taking it back for 15 minutes. And the same goes for, you know, those of you who have kids, especially small kids who need a lot of attention. And so if, if that's the case, then maybe it is concentrated short burst of 100% attention on them and what they're doing and then say, okay, now I got to go make dinner or I got to, you know, do my accounting or I need to work on my business or something. So, but that's that concentrated time is what the child's going to remember. And that's going to be the most beneficial for them because they have you 100%. And that, again, is how we use that Pluto to take back the power, to take control of, of this aspect. Now, when it comes to relationships, your chart is lit up. You have so many opportunities to meet people for friendships, to connect with a love relationship if you want, to have a better time with your partner. But the 
energy is a semi-sextile. Um, Venus is making a semi-sextile to Mars, so there is some small impediment in the way. And so that is that little bit of friction maybe that means that you're not getting out of the house or you're not accepting the invitation or you're not stomping long enough to have the conversation, even a couple of sentences. And so that's, if you can overcome that small obstacle, and I know it's, I said small, but it may feel gargantuan at the moment, but it is still the semi-sextile. It's just a little bit of friction. And once you get past that, then there's a connection. Now, when it comes to your money, you pull money, of course, from both Pluto and Mars. And Mars is approaching the conjunction to Neptune. And Neptune is the ideal, that vision that you have. And so one of the things that you can do right now that can really boost your money in the future is to look at your daily life situation of how you are doing things and think to yourself, like, what's the one thing I could do that changes it's such a game changer and think of something that is within your control not you know like i win the lottery that's lovely but that's out of your control but this might be that you know that you spend that 15 minutes just phoning up clients or uh working on your craft or working on your website like that can be the game changer for you. But it's just as you have that vision, it's it's kind of funny. Like sometimes if we are wanting to do something like exercise or practice a piano or something like that, to visualize ourselves doing that thing, then we find ourselves doing it. So that's what I mean here is first see yourself doing it and then you will do it. Okay, Scorpio, this, this is your full moon, which means you are halfway through your lunar year. This is now the beginning of your harvest period. So a lot of the things that you've been working on for the last six months, you now have an opportunity to gather some benefits from that. And that is from connections and that can manifest as actual money or opportunities in your job, opportunities for friendships and relationships. And that's going to last for mm, probably, well, at least a couple of months. So you, you have more time than just two weeks. But the specific thing about this full moon, of course, is that it's making a square to Pluto. And I've been warning all the signs, like a square to Pluto can mean that you feel like you are coerced into doing something, that somebody's forcing you to do it because they have more power in the situation or you've given them your power. This may not be so much the case for you because, you know, Pluto is your guy, you know, Pluto rules Scorpio. And so you have more experience with Pluto than most. And so you may feel like, oh, this person's trying to manipulate me into doing something, you know, like, so what's different about yesterday? You know, like, how is this different than any other day? So, so you may understand that, but you do still have the aspect. And that means to look to see, are you giving your power away in a situation? Now, Pluto's right at the base of your chart. And so this is about family and, you know, uh, what we learn in our upbringing and how that is speaking to our choices now. And so one of the things you might do is, is a game I love to play, which is called Spot the Family Pattern, which is where you look at your siblings or your cousins or even the generations and you look for family patterns that you might not consciously think you're doing, but if you see it in a bunch of siblings or cousins, you're probably doing it in some way. And that can open your eyes so that you can break free of things that you don't want to be carrying forward in the legacy or to capitalize on the things that you do want to, um, you know, be, be part of in the family legacy. So, so that's, that's basically, you know, like, if, if you can just see it, you can see where your choices are unconscious, then once they become conscious, now they are truly a choice. Now, when it comes to relationships of all kinds, because you have not only a really strong relationship house, but you have a strong house of co-workers right now. And so there's all types of relationships. There's no aspect going on between Pluto and Venus, but 
uh, Mars and Venus are making a 70 sextile, which means that there's good relationship energy. If you can get over that small little speed bump, that small little bit of friction that is holding you back from, you know, accepting a coffee date or um, having a discussion with your partner about something they do at home that just kind of irks you. So this is, if you can get past that little bit, that tiny, tiny little hurdle, I can't even call it a hurdle. It's, it's that small, but it's just enough that that friction causes us not to, you know, do something. And, you know, I think people sometimes underestimate the semi-sextile and its power. Um, I think that the grocery stores really know how to use the semi-sextile because the semi-sextile is that the fact that the healthy foods are way at the top and the cheap foods are way at the bottom and then everything that they really want to sell us is right at eye level. That semi-sextile of having to look up or having to search down at the bottom of the shelf, that is energy that's the hurdle and so once we get past that once we get used to it it's it's nothing and so this is such good relationship energy once you get past that little speed bump okay when it comes to your money you're pulling money from jupiter which is in your house of relationships and that's going to be so for another month at thereabouts and then it's going to shift so that means you have one month left that where you the more people you meet and the more connections you have the more money you can make in the future so this is a time to really put yourself out there maybe on linkedin or maybe social media or maybe just going to meetings of a networking group or reaching out to people you used to work with but this is about person to person connections and when you do that then you have you're planting seeds for future money Okay, Sagittarius, uh, as I've been telling all of the signs, the most difficult part of this full moon is the fact that it's making the square to Pluto. Now, that can mean that you feel like you are being forced into doing something um, by someone who is either maybe manipulating you or you feel coerced or you're in a situation where you feel that they have the power and you don't. Now, specifically for you, this full moon is lighting up your house of unconscious patterns. And so if you are feeling like you're in a situation where you are stuck doing something you don't want to do, or you just find yourself in a set of behaviors you've done before, this could have an unconscious trigger. And so this is the time to look at that and say, oh, because there's a big spotlight with the full moon to say, oh, I see what I'm doing. I don't need to do it this way. I have some choices. I can take my power back. And, and so, and because of the placement of Pluto, this could be something that is verbal or it's in writing. Um, it, may, it may be something that's just in your head that you are hearing somebody say, they may not be saying those words, but you know, they are coming, they're being translated in your head as being you know, a command or something that you feel like you can't say no to. And this is your opportunity to say no, to say, oh, I see I'm stuck in a pattern. And so I'm going to do something different. Now, the sun is sitting in that house of daily routines, and that can mean that your days are so packed that there is just no quiet space where you can analyze some of the unconscious patterns that are happening. And you know, I, and I get it because there's so much good content out there and it's just, we can just keep watching and watching. So, and even when I think that like, I'm not, you know, watching that much, it was so funny. Cause like the other day I was thinking, I'm going to send a client this great video that I saw a podcast that I had listened to. And so I, I went into my YouTube history to, to find it thinking, Oh, you know what? I just saw that like recently so it's got to be just one or two and I went oh look I watched this and I watched this and I watched this and I watched this and I didn't even think I was watching that much and and so this is an opportunity now with this full moon to say what are the patterns or unconscious behaviors that you're doing that you could then say ah look look at what I'm doing and then break that cycle 
Now, when it comes to relationships, and this would be all types of relationships, Mercury's making a semi-sextile to Jupiter. So there is an opportunity to connect with someone and you have a great house of uh, love and romance and all of that, but everything except for the moon is below the horizon and that moon is in a hidden house for you. So it's almost like you're forgetting to get out into the place where the person could find you. So, and that might mean that you're too busy to accept the invitation to the party or uh, to a social event, or you have so many obligations with your kids that you just can't really deal with relationships right now. The semi-sextile says that small adjustments can help. And maybe that is just saying, I can stop in the party for 15 minutes, or that you just, get out to get a cup of coffee or to walk in the park for a few minutes just just so that your presence is out there so that the universe can see you to send you someone if you're looking for love or to you know if you're looking for friendship so that you then bump into the person you haven't talked to in a while and the conversation starts so that's you know all of this is going to line up better Right now, everybody's doing a lot of semi-sextiles, and so that means there's just a lot of friction between what you want and actually getting it. Now, when it comes to money and finances in general, the moon is making a very harmonious approach to an aspect with Saturn. I, I was about to say they're making an aspect, but they're out of orb, and that means that they're a little too far. So it's that the money's coming, but it's not quite in sight yet. It's Maybe you're like at the train station and you can hear the train in the distance, you can't quite see it, and you certainly can't get on the train yet. So this says, continue to do what you're doing, you're on the right track. Now, this is reiterated by having such a strong house of work that then that is like, again, you're heading in the right direction, but you haven't reached your destination yet. So try not to be impatient, but just keep going and you will reach that, you know, point of money pretty soon. You know, we're going to watch it as, as it's going forward, but not during this two week period. Okay, Capricorn, the difficult part of this full moon, of course, is it's making a square to Pluto. And that's what I've been telling all of the signs about that this square to Pluto can make you feel like you are having to do things that you don't want to do, that you are being forced in some way or manipulated in some way, or that you've given your power away in a situation so you don't feel like you have a choice. And that's the thing that you're combating in this full moon is to say, I do have a choice. I do have some opportunities. Now, the interesting thing, this particular full moon is lighting up your house of the future. And so it may feel like it's not a person that is saying you have to do this, but you may feel that circumstances are heading in a direction that is causing you to have to make choices that you don't want to make. So the, I think that, and this would be less about what's actually happening, of course, because it's in the future, and more about your perception of what the future could bring. And while I think, of course, as an astrologer, that it's very good to look ahead and to see the possibilities, I like to focus the energy on individuals because as an individual, you have a lot of choice. You have a lot of power. As a society, we have less so because, you know, neither you or I are king of the world. So therefore, we can't direct all of the things that are happening out there. But I will say, I mean, one of the things to remember is that, that you know, people keep running through the same patterns over and over again. Then that's because the planets move at a regular cycle. And so, yes, we're in innovative times and people would say unprecedented, but actually these things keep repeating over and over, you know, with, with all of the innovations that are happening lately, yes, it's very, very hard for all of us to keep up with the technology and all of that. But, but then I was thinking about someone who was born, say, in 1900, who might have started with a horse and buggy. And then, you know, by the time they're 50, they're flying in an airplane. And it, when they're 60, somebody's landing in the moon, you know, so like, that's a lot of technology. And so, you know, we, 
we are living in a time where there is all of these technological breakthroughs and we're going to figure it out. And so anyway, long, long story short. <laughs> so this is about you chunking down and saying no matter what happens out in the world that you're going to be okay because you have experiences and skills and you have a network of people you can connect with and because of that you are going to be okay now when it comes to relationships and this could be love relationships or business partnerships while the moon's not making an aspect with saturn they're in a compatible they're in compatible signs and the moon is moving closer to a trine and that does mean that there are some really good opportunities the one difficulty is that it's only the moon above the horizon and that means that unless you get out the door nobody's seeing you no one's remembering you and so if you're sitting by the phone waiting for someone to call because everything's below the horizon they can't they can't remember they can't see you and so just even stepping out the door you know go to, to go to the grocery store or to uh, go out to eat or something like that you could run into this person or if you were dealing with some like an existing relationship a love relationship or a friendship go out away from the house and talk about it there because I think that that's where you're gonna have a different perspective both parties will be able to see the other side more easily so that's what to do over this next two weeks and then similarly in when it comes to your money you've got the Sun while it's not making an aspect with Uranus it's on approach and they're in the same sign and so there is more and more harmony and what this is saying that when it comes to making money that it's there you're on the right track you just have to go a little farther down the road here so it, it would be like trying to harvest something before it's even grown before the fruit is on the tree but it does say that the fruit is going to happen and you will be able to harvest just not quite yet so this is very much about go continuing on the same path because you're heading in the right direction okay Aquarius um the thing that I'm telling everybody in this is that the difficulty with this full moon is it's making a square to Pluto and so when there is a square to Pluto it can feel like you are being forced into some sort of action or a decision that you don't want to make because it's it's like the other person has the power or you're giving them the power and abdicating your choice now the interesting thing for you is that Pluto is going through your own sign of Aquarius and it's it's a very long transit it's 20 years of reminding you to take back your power that you are the a supremely powerful being you have abilities to make choices and changes in your life and so you can in this situation say you know what I'm not going to make a choice here or I'm going to decide what I'm doing with my life or my time or with my money and that's because you can own that Pluto energy now I don't want to say that that's easy all right but because if you're in a career that you're not thrilled with it takes a lot to change to a new vocation but it's still possible and this is this full moon is very elevated in your chart so as you start to say I want something else it's almost like the universe can see you more clearly because the there's this big spotlight on you and so we can see you you know like the heavens can see you people can see you and so as you state this is really what I want you gain the power back and then the opportunities come but it starts with you saying this is what I want now it is true that a lot of times people are not sure what they want and so by process of elimination they're trying to decide everything that they don't want but I think this is a pretty slow way to do it and so maybe looking at things that that you've already decided that you don't want and determining if there's any part of that that you do want you know that's it's kind of like from a food standpoint it would be like okay I don't I don't like the crust but I like the filling or vice versa 
And from finding the things that you do like, maybe about your job or your relationship or anything, then you can start to build on that and find what it is you do want. Now, when it comes to relationships and, and all types of relationships, partnerships and love relationships, uh, the sun and Uranus are not making an aspect, but they are in the same sign and the sun is moving closer and closer. And so there is this opportunity for a meeting of the minds where the two of you come together in real harmony, or if you want to meet someone new, you could do that. So, but it's gonna take a little bit of patience because you're not quite there yet. It's, it's like you're, you're on the farm and you've planted the seeds, but you can't immediately harvest. You have to wait for things to grow and blossom and become the fruit or grains that you're looking for. So you're on the right path. You just need to stay on the path. Now, when it comes to your money, you pull money from both Neptune and Jupiter. And in this case, Mars is moving closer and closer to Neptune, which is an energetic conjunction of taking an action for something that you're dreaming of, some, something that you have a vision of. And this is really close now. So within this two week period, it would be really good to take a step forward on something that you wanna do that is leading to money. And this would be quite a direct action. So this would be calling up a person who is a potential customer or launching the product and then telling everyone about it or launching the website and telling everyone about it. And of course, full moon energy is about the launch. It's about the party. So as we get, of course, into the two weeks and get closer and closer to the old moon and then, of course, the new moon after that, then now we're kind of past that launch period. So this would be trying to do something in the next couple of days if you're going to launch something. But over the two weeks, definitely focus on direct action that could make you money because then you get the benefit of the conjunction to Neptune. Okay, Pisces, this particular full moon is kind of challenged because it's making a square to Pluto. And so I've, and this is for all signs uh, that that square to Pluto is the part that I think is, could trip people up because a square to Pluto means that someone or circumstances are asking you to do something that you don't necessarily want to do. You might feel like you're pressured or coerced or manipulated into doing something or that you don't have the power to say no. And so the, but the way this is lined up for you, this Pluto, which is in your hidden house, is something that's not directly somebody saying you must do this, but a feeling that you have that you should do something or you must do something. And your solution here is because the moon is lighting up your area of philosophy and beliefs is to understand what your true, true motivations are, your true reasons are for whatever it is that you want. If you say, you know, like, I, I want to make sure that I'm financially secure so I'm not a burden to my family so I can help people I care about, that's a good mission. So therefore, you don't have to listen to, you know, other temptations of like, you should give all your money to, you know, this company. Uh, this is, if you said, you know, like my mission is to go to school and get an education uh, so that therefore I can be this wonderful member of society, then, then the temptations of doing things that pull you off of that path, you can say no to. So that's, that's some of what it is, is to figure out what your higher purpose is. And you know, and I know a lot of people seem to search for their higher purpose, but I really believe it's more about picking a higher purpose of saying, I'm quite interested in this, um, you know, and that can be financial security, or it can be taking care of the family, or it could be taking care of the community, or it could be changing the world. Like it, it, it can go from this microcosm to something that is macro. That's fine, but it's important, I think, to pick that path. And then if along the way, you either finish that, you know, like, okay, the family's secure and everybody's happy, I'm gonna go off and do something else, that's fine. It's, or you could come to a place in the road and say, 
okay, this path isn't really working for me anymore. I want to choose something different. I think that's okay too. But to not have the path and then be swept around in different directions because of something like a Pluto square, that's where then it feels like you don't get to make your own choice. And you do. You get to make your own choice. And, and that's, what, that's what this aspect is about, taking back that power. Now, when it comes to relationships, and this could be all kinds of relationships, uh, love relationships, business partnerships, there's no aspect going on between Neptune and Mercury and Mercury's retrograde. And so there's very much, I think what you're going to be hearing from people is like the same story. Like they're upset with you because of the same thing they were upset about before, even if you've changed your behavior, even if you're doing something different. So, because they don't see it yet, it, there's no aspect. Or if you are looking for a love relationship, it's the same thing. You feel like you're not making a connection because it's retrograde. You're in, in an old loop. And we do the retrograde energy so that we can do something different. And so changing some way, like if the, your partner says to you the same complaint, respond in a different way and see if you can get that pattern to break, that, that there's something different that happens. Or the same thing, if you are looking for love and you go to the same types of places or you do the same things, break the pattern and do the retrograde that way. Now, when it comes to your money, you have a very strong money house. And so there are some opportunities. Uh, Venus is making a semi-sextile to Mars. So the money that is out in the world can come to you, but there is some small little obstacles or irritations on the way. So there's a little bit of friction and it is remarkable how a little bit of friction can stop us. I mean, there, there's, uh, there's a lot of feng shui that works based on friction. You know, like uh, if I come into your house to feng shui your refrigerator uh, to uh, help you eat healthier, the only thing that I have to do is take all the sweets and all of that, put that in the vegetable drawer and put the veggies at eye level, you're going to eat more vegetables because it's so much easier to grab those. That's the lack of friction. And so the semi-sextile is there's a little bit of friction. And that is, you know, to get the snacks, you would have to reach down into the vegetable drawer. And so that's the same thing here. Maybe you have to send an invoice or phone someone or even just lock out your schedule to say, I'm available to have some sort of money-making opportunity here. Just notice the fr friction and then get past it, get past the speed bump. And then you will find that more money comes into your life, especially over this next two weeks. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, there are some links in the description to my readings and my courses. So I hope you'll check those out and I will see you in the next video.